Okay, hello, uh, my name is Ashley Hilliard. Um, I'm a retired real estate lawyer. I practiced real estate law in Vancouver for almost 30 years. Um, and in my career, I acted largely for developers of commercial buildings, condominiums, shopping centers, office buildings, and so on. And I have high regard for many developers, and I'm certainly not opposed to development. Uh, in fact, in my retirement, I've invested in real estate development in Vancouver and Victoria. We were attracted to Salt Spring by the same things that attracted most people. Beautiful surroundings, peaceful character, the rural nature, the artistic community. Uh, it was different than many other places, and that difference was very attractive. As a lawyer, I've given this issue of incorporation a lot of thought, and I've read the incorporation study, um, and I've approached it a little bit as I would if a client came to me and asked me, you know, Ashley, what do you think about this incorporation? You know, is it a good idea? What should we do? What, what's your analysis? And my conclusion is that if I had a client like that, I would tell them to consider this question long and hard. Because if you decide to go down the incorporation route, that's it. You've decided you're not going back. Islanders have been asked the question many times, I believe, or several times at least. Um, I was not a permanent resident the last time here. And they've turned it down, and that was probably for some good reasons, and you should think about those reasons. I think it would fundamentally change the character of Salt Spring. Over time, it would probably also fundamentally change parts of the physical nature of Salt Spring if um, we were to go back to uh, greater density and subdivisions or so on. Um, it will create a more divisive atmosphere, I believe. Municipal politics will enter Salt Spring, which they don't right now. And I do think that we run a grave risk of doing some economic damage to what's so attractive to us, which is the Salt Spring brand, if you like. Now, I'm talking about a brand, and maybe I've watched or listened to too much Terry O'Reilly on CBC Radio. He emphasizes the importance of one's brand, um, and this is not just from an economic point of view, but also from the point of view for all of us who enjoy living here. And by that, he means what is it that is so special about Salt Spring? If we become a municipality, then I think eventually will become a municipality like so many others. And you can look around our neighborhood here, Saanich, Sydney, Duncan, Parksville. I mean, they're all wonderful places to visit and I'm not knocking them at all, but they're not Salt Spring. And I don't really understand why we would want to become more like them rather than trying to preserve what it is we have right now. So I guess if my client pressed me and said, what do you think I should do besides thinking long and hard, I would say, I think you should not take this, this, this offer. I think you should stay with what you have. It's worked very well up till now. No doubt it could be approved. I've got some ideas how it could be improved. I know I've talked to many other people who've got some ideas how we could make the system better, particularly if we had elected representatives who were focused on doing that as opposed to spending an awful lot of their time on this question of incorporation. So what's protected Salt Spring and why is Salt Spring and the other Gulf Islands that are in the Islands Trust different? Well. The major thing that has protected Salt Spring, and I say this as a, you know, as a with somebody with legal training, 
is the Islands Trust and the Islands Trust Act. And so that's really my first thing I'd like to talk about is the Islands Trust. Its influence will be severely lessened if uh, Salt Spring decides to become an island municipality. People say that's not the case, and I think they're wrong. At the moment, the land use planning on the island is done by Island Trust employees who operate under the preserve and protect mandate of the trust. It's a remarkable piece of legislation. It's the only local government's legislation I know of that puts protection of the natural environment at the top of its list of priorities. In fact, it's the object of the trust. And it is a trust. A trust is something that is given to somebody to care for, to look after, and to pass on to future generations. That's stated directly in the Islands Trust Act, and it's not just for islanders, it's for the inhabitants of British Columbia generally. It's a very progressive piece of legislation. It was progressive for its day, 1970, in the 1970s when it was brought in, even more so now. It's a green piece of legislation. It's the way municipalities ought to be going, all of them. It's what municipalities are trying to do. Just look at the city of Vancouver that's making this effort to brand itself as the greenest city in the world. The Islands Trust has, to a large extent, achieved that purpose of keeping the natural environment on Salt Spring and the other Gulf Islands at the top of the list of its priorities. It hasn't stifled development. There's been lots of development on the island and growth and buildings and so on. They happen, but they're moderated. The pro side has said that we shouldn't worry because the municipality will still be bound, they say, by the mandate of the trust. Legally, that is not correct. And I'm actually at this point going to read the actual section of the act. What the Islands Trust Act says is this. It says that a council of a, of a municipality, all are part of which are in the trust area, must have regard to the object of the trust in adopting a bylaw or issuing a permit or license. So let me repeat that. A council of a municipality within the trust area must have regard to the object of the trust. Now the object of the trust is its mandate and that's set out in section 3. By the way, the section I just quoted is section 39.1 if you want to look it up. The object of the trust, its mandate is section 3 which is to preserve and protect the trust area and its unique amenities and environment for the benefit of the residents of the trust area and of British Columbia generally. So, have regard to is not the same as be bound by, and you don't have to be a lawyer to understand the difference. A municipality has a bunch of responsibilities to provide services to its residents, to, to look after the, the assets of the municipality, to maintain the roads, to assist in the economic development of its community. Um, there are a lot of things that it does. So when it is considering a bylaw, it will under Section 39.1, must have it must have regard to the preserve and protect mandate, but it will also have regard to a whole bunch of other things, and it may very well then decide that those other things trump the preserve and protect. So it's not that they will be bound by the by the trust, by the islands and by the mandate of the trust, as the yes side has said, and there's a distinct difference. The second point on the trust is that the trust employees who are currently the land use planners will become employees of the municipality and will be responsible to the municipal council and only two of the trustees two of the councillors will be trustees the rest will not you can imagine that there will be a different dynamic at work if you're a planner working for a regular municipality with its 
a variety of priorities or whether you are a planner whose job is to implement the object of the trust. And so I think there will be a fundamental change in the nature of the trust. It loses money from Salt Spring, it will fall away. This possibility of the trust falling away, and I don't think it's far-fetched to suggest that if Salt Spring incorporates, it could be the beginning of the end of the trust. Because if Salt Spring incorporates, the trust loses a good portion of its, of its revenue. It no longer are the, are the planners on Salt Spring Island trust planners. They are now municipal planners. It's a balkanization of the trust. And this was, this was, was seen when this provision to allow a municipality within the trust area was brought in. It was brought in, by the way, by Bill Vanderzam's government, social credit government. It didn't exist at the beginning. When the trust was established, you couldn't establish a municipality within it. But Bill Vanderzam, who didn't like the trust very much, brought this provision in. And critics at the time said, that's the thin end of the wedge. You could very well end up just fragmenting the trust by it dividing into a bunch of different municipalities. Now, Bowen is a separate situation. It's close to Vancouver physically, West Vancouver. The trust can operate with Bowen being a municipality. I'm not convinced that the trust would be able to operate long term with Salt Spring as a municipality. And it might very well lead to other islands deciding that this is the route they are going to have to go down as well. And I think that would be a shame. So besides the legal points that I may have touched on just then, there's a couple of other things that I think are, are important. I think that a um, island municipality will eventually bring greater influence for developers. And it's simply because developers and municipal politicians over time have a common interest. The municipal politicians have an interest in preserving and maintaining and protecting the tax base of the municipality and that's their job. You know, they gotta be good stewards of it. They generally run on a platform of providing better services, additional services, and so on. And those additional services generally require some additional revenue. So they can either tell the electorate that these additional services are going to cost more money, may higher taxes. That's not generally thought of as a, as a good platform. Or they can seek to expand the tax base. And of course, developers come in at that point because they provide a way to expand the tax base quite readily. You can upzone property, you can rezone property, you can permit greater density, you can fast track subdivision applications, you can charge development cost fees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and you can thereby increase the tax revenue of the, of the municipality. And developers know this, and they have a comfort zone in dealing with municipal councils, and they support councillors that are favorable to them. They are known to be the largest contributors to many political campaigns. And I think that is where we could go on Salt Spring. I'm not saying we will, but we could go that way if we incorporate. You see it other places. You get the divisive municipal politics. You get factions. You get slates. You get problems maybe even as bad as Nanaimo, you know, where the city is suing its own mayor. I don't know why we would want to do that. We have a system that divides responsibility between different groups. It provides separate funding for different groups like Art Spring and so on. It's all broken out in your CRD tax bill. I think that's a better system for Salt Spring than incorporation. One more thing I'd like to say, talk about is this issue of control. We're told that we must incorporate so that we can get more control. I don't understand this argument. I don't think it's, it's right. Take the roads as an example, and Brenda Guild has done a wonderful study on the actual cost of the roads. We're, so, we incorporate, now we're responsible for the roads. As soon as we've blown through that $20 million that's being offered as part of the package, and I don't think it's gonna take that long to do that, what do we got then? We're now responsible 
to pay for these roads. These roads are going to continue to deteriorate. They're going to need maintenance and costs. That cost is now going to be borne by us. So I fear, after incorporation, we're not going to be in control of the roads. The roads are going to be in control of us. And the same thing applies to other services. There was a study done in 2014 by an institute in Victoria called the Columbia Institute. And it studied this issue of municipalities and senior governments. It was called, Who's Picking Up the Tab? Federal and Provincial Downloading onto Local Governments. And their conclusion, having surveyed a lot of municipal politicians throughout BC, large and small, they came to the conclusion 84% of the locally elected leaders surveyed for who's picking up the tab said federal and provincial downloading of costs onto local governments is a major problem for their community. What kind of control is that? At the moment, we have raised funds for a whole bunch of different service providers, Art Spring, the library, Parks and Rec is under CRD, all of whom get their own funding. That's provided right now. Why would we want to join that club of municipalities who complain, rightfully, that costs are always being downloaded onto them? So, in conclusion, I think all of us have to ask ourselves, why should we do this and who benefits from incorporation? Who wants us to do this? Now, number one, we know it was the formal, former liberal government of British Columbia. They would have loved for us to become a municipality just like all the others, and they could treat us just like all the others. So a second group who might uh, like it if the island were to incorporate are some developers. I don't say all developers because the ones that um, are thinking green and are, and, are, and are good are probably quite happy to work within the current rules of the trust and see the benefits of doing that. But some developers who don't like the restrictions that the trust imposes or want to do things quickly or you know, on the cheap or to make as quick a buck as they can would probably prefer to deal with the municipal council uh, that's within their comfort zone. They know how to deal with councils. They know how to, to, uh, to, uh, to talk to municipal politicians and they probably would want this. I don't think that's to our, to our benefit. A third group would be, I guess, a group of people who maybe see themselves as the future mayor and councillors or the powers behind the throne, so to speak. The municipal, a municipal council on Salt Spring will have a considerable amount of influence over the island. All the tax revenue that we currently raise separately for separate organizations, such as Art Spring, the library, all of that money goes into a single pot under a municipality. So the stakes become a bit higher now if we become a municipal. The mayor of Salt Spring and the councillors will have a lot of power, and maybe there's some people on the island who, who want that. I personally would not want to see that. I think it will be corrosive. I think it will introduce municipal politics to Salt Spring and I for one am quite happy that we don't have municipal politics on Salt Spring. So for all of those reasons my advice to my hypothetical client would be think long and hard and personally I'm going to be voting against incorporation.